Thank you, Grand Cola. <clears throat> the key objective of the primary care strategy is to develop services in the community that will give people direct access to integrated, multidisciplinary teams of general practitioners, nurses, physiotherapists, occupational therapists, and other healthcare dis disciplines. This is central to this government's objective to deliver a high quality, integrated, and cost effective health system. A modern, well equipped primary care infrastructure is central to the effective functioning of primary care teams. These teams enable multidisciplinary services to be delivered on a single site, provide a single point of access for users, and encourage closer coordination between health providers. The infrastructure development, through a combination of public and private investment, aims to facilitate the delivery of multidisciplinary primary health care and represents a tangible refocusing of the health service to deliver care in the most appropriate and lower, lowest cost settings. The intention to date has been that, where appropriate, infrastructure for primary care centres will be provided by the private sector through negotiated lease agreements. The Exchequer would also fund the delivery of some primary care centres, particularly in deprived urban areas, small rural towns and isolated areas. In addition, a list of 35 potential locations for development by way of public-private partnership as part of the Government's infrastructure stimulus package was developed. Earlier this year, the HSE put together a list of high-priority locations for the development of primary care centres across Ireland. Three criteria were deployed for selecting primary care centres. An assessment of deprivation, the deprivation index for the catchment population of the centre. The service priority identified by each integrated service area and local health office. An accommodation assessment, which assessed accommodation available for the primary care team within the catchment area, the quality of the accommodation, and whether or not the accommodation was spread over more than one building. Other factors were considered when selecting centres for the inclusion on the PPP list. New criteria were added. It was evident, for example, that consideration needed to be given to existing health facilities or the lack thereof, GP to population ratio, pressures on services, particularly acute services, funding options including exchequer funded HSE build or lease and the implementability of a PPP relating to its size, site and scale. By deciding to create a list of 35 rather than 20, I provided positive encouragement for engagement and financial participation by GPs in this significant and important stimulus package. When dealing with public-private partnerships, it makes sense to maximise the options available. As I mentioned earlier, PPP is one of the three methods of delivery being considered by the HSE for the purpose of developing primary care centres. Lease and exchequer funded HSE bills are also under consideration. The list of 35 potential locations refer to those that may be progressed by way of the public-private partnership, PPP. It is envisaged that 20 of these locations will be progressed by this means. With regard to the criteria for progressing centres, I am satisfied that the criteria I have outlined is appropriate for the selection of primary care centre locations in the future. The HSE is currently engaging with the NDFA, the National Development Finance Agency, as required to progress, to progress the primary care centre element of the government's public-private partnership programme. The HSE is currently analysing the available sites in each location and engaging with GPs in each location to determine their interest in participating in the primary care centre development. Kian Corla, I would also like to clarify the record of the House. In the Irish Independent this morning, it is suggested that the site owned by Mr Murphy was effectively selected by the HSE in 2010 as the site for a primary care centre. The paper suggests that this information is available by way of a parliamentary reply to me in February of 2010 when I was in opposition. The relevant journalist also made that statement on Morning Ireland and my assistants then retrieved the relevant PQ answer and the follow-up letter I received from the HSE. 
That letter from the 1st of February 2010 states, and I quote, the HS HSE has selected a preferred provider for expressions of interest. It later goes on, the proposed site will be accessible by pedestrians off Dublin Street and should be well served by Dublin Bus. The letter therefore appears to support the report in the Irish Independent and on Morning Ireland. Minister Rory Quinn referred to it during leaders' questions in the House this morning, and I referred to it myself on RT Radio this morning. I've had this double-checked with the HSE, and I'm advised that, in fact, the reports are incorrect. In fact, the letter from the HSE in 2010 refers to another site in an area called Stevenstown, some distance from the site owned by Mr Murphy. It appears that option ran into a number of difficulties, and in November of 2010, the letter of intent was withdrawn. The HSE then returned to the other interested parties and ultimately selected Mr. A. J. Noonan. In September of last year, the HSE signed an agreement for lease with Mr. A. J. Noonan to develop a primary care centre. This information has been provided to us by the HSE, and if deputies want further information, it can be furnished by the HSE. If I could just make a few general points, and then I'll allow for the questions. We cannot deliver the quality of care required at a price the country can afford through the hospital-centric mo model of care, and we need a new integrated model of care which treats patients at the lowest level of complexity that's safe, timely, efficient, and as near to home as possible. I want to work with GPs. I want their active and direct involvement in chronic disease management. I want them to work as part of a more responsive hospital service. GPs and primary care are central to our health and well-being, and we need the active support of other sectors in our economy to improve health and well-being which are essential to the sustainable development and the economic and social interests of the country. The PPPs will deliver jobs and the first tranche of the 115 million of investment, which is vital to our construction industry. The reforms that I am delivering will keep people healthy, provide the health care that people need, deliver high quality services and get best value from health system resources. The new health care system and primary care system will have a number of tangible changes that patients will experience improved health and well-being, faster equitable access to hospital care, free access to GP care, better management of chronic illness, more people treated in their homes, and improved quality and safety. I want primary care centres to be the campus for best care and first choice for patients. Primary care is the best solution to support an ageing and more dependent population of patients. The population growth projections estimate the population of Ireland will reach 5.7 million by 2021 and significant increases are expected across all age groups. The modern primary care unit will support children and adolescents, adults and seniors. I want every community across the country to have a modern and dynamic primary care centre. I want to foster a culture that promotes health and well-being across the community. And above all else, I can call it, I want the best outcomes for the patients we serve. Thank you, Minister. Um, I now call on Deputy Joe Higgins. Uh, Minister, I don't know if you are a fan of the late actor Humphrey Bogart, but when it comes to the selection of primary health care centres in Balbriggan, certainly Rick's joint in Casablanca definitely comes to my mind, that of all the streets, of all the areas in all of Balbriggan, and the primary care centre would land in the lap of a Fine Gael businessman, a contributor to Fine Gael, and a supporter of yourself. Uh, not only that, but according to the Irish Independent, ACC Bank and Treasury Holdings have judgments on two tranches of that site, and therefore a lease with the health service executive and the owner of the site would increase the value of this site enormously thus alleviating, of course, the financial difficulties of the Fine Gael supporter in question. And thirdly, the gentleman who was given the lease is also a contributor to Fine Gael. Now, Minister, when you assumed office, your Taoiseach told us with great conviction that this kind of 
political cronyism, stroke pulling and the likes, was with Fianna Fáil in its political grave, and that we were into an era of transparency and of honesty. And the Labour Party, before it developed this most acute strain of Stockholm Syndrome, following its being taken hostage by yourselves, also promised us similarly. Now, Minister, to any ordinary person outside of the political establishment looking at this whole fiasco of the selection of primary health care centres, what conclusion do you think would be reasonable for them to draw? Would it not be that this was, unfortunately, a return in North Dublin to old practices, political stroke-pulling and cronyism, which excelled in that area by certain individuals and a particular party, and now it's been revived by yourselves? Can I ask you, Minister, what is your relationship with the owner of this site. What is your political relationship? Um, have you any business connections with this uh, particular uh, person? What has been the process of uh, this site being selected? Have you had any discussions with this uh, person? Have any representatives of yours have discussions with this person? Were you kept informed of this uh, uh, situation as it developed? And what role did you yourself play in the selection of this particular site? Thank you. Uh, before the Ministry replies, I just want to put on the record that the Chair on many occasions has ruled that allegations of a serious nature against any member of this House can only be made by way of substantive motion. And to suggest that people are acting corruptly or improperly is not in order. Uh, so uh, I would like to remind deputies that that has been tradition in this House for as long as the records show. Minister. Thank you, Count Corla. I'd have to point out to the Speaker across that this site is under the control of NAMA. And therefore, Mr Murphy doesn't gain NAMA gains, if there is indeed any gain. And NAMA represents the people in terms of trying to get back the monies that were lost. The other people to gain, of course, are the people of Balbriggan, whom I support. Balbriggan is a town that has seen its population double in 10 years and has the second highest area of unemployment in the Greater Dublin area. I'd also point out that this town was chosen by the HSE in 2000, 2000, sorry, 2007 2008 and both it and SOARS were brought to the board of the HSE in 2008 and both were approved. So the need is long established, the priority is long there. And frankly, Count Corla, I say again, I consider it an insult to the people of SOARS and Balbriggan to say to them that the only way that they can get what they deserve and need by proven independent individuals is through political strokery. I want to answer directly your other questions. I have no business connection to Mr Murphy. I had no discussions with him about this primary care centre. And I have absolutely no role in the selection of a site. And as I said on the radio this morning, the only site I have control over that I didn't want to go in because I was becoming Minister for Health, was the site I own in Swords. I hope that clarifies it. 